Greetings, greetings, how y'all doing? In this video, what I intend to cover is how you would actually carry out a z-score transformation on a variable in R, as well as create a new standardized distribution based upon that variable. So to help us out, I've already taken the liberty of creating two variables, x and y, both of which have a thousand scores in them, and are just randomly generated with a mean of around 56 or something. So, if we want to conduct a z-score transformation, how you would do it by hand if you were just doing a single z-score is you would take the x value, your score, and subtract the mean, and then divide the standard deviation into that difference. When we're trying to do it for every single score in a variable in R, it's really just as simple as typing this out substituting our z right here for the r object name we want these values to be saved into substitute the array or our object that we want to do the calculations on here and then the functions for mean of said r object and standard deviation for said r object so let's do a, a concrete example so that you can easily see it so what we need to do here is we need z, and let's do zx so we know this is a z-score transformation of x, is equal to parentheses, because we want standard deviation to divide into it after we do the subtraction, our x scores minus the mean of x, go to the end, divide by the standard deviation of x. And then you can go ahead and run that code which I do with the keyboard shortcut control enter on a PC. And there we go. If we look over here at the global environment, we can see that we have created this new variable ZX, and we are going to want to check it to make sure that it actually came out to what it should be. So every Z-score distribution should have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So our mean of ZX should come out to zero. Now, if you do this in R, just like this, you won't actually get zero, and here's why. Ultimately, it does come out to zero in reality, but only after you carry the calculation out so far. R will actually spit out a number in scientific notation, in this case, negative 4.736 and change, E negative 17, which, comes to is essentially negative 4.73 times 10 to the negative 17. So after R carried it out to 17 decimal places, it gave up and said, enough's enough, I'm done. So R gets lazy here. So if we really want to see what the mean is, practically, we need to use the round function. First argument is the number you want to round. And then the second argument is how many decimal places. Let's just go five. Okay? Control enter to run that, and we can see now we get that mean of zero because R is going ahead and rounding off at this point. Now, when we actually look at our standard deviation, it should be one. So ZX standard deviation. This time it works out quite nicely for us. Okay, but R just gets lazy when calculating the mean here, and it doesn't carry the calculations out far enough. Now we can do the same thing with the Y variable. As a little bit of review. So when we want to do a z-score transformation, we need to type in the name of the object we want the new value saved into, set it equal to all of our scores, in this case our y scores, minus their mean. Make sure you have the parentheses around it to ensure that the subtraction occurs before you divide in the standard deviation of said scores. And then we run that code and we can see now we have zy over here. And if we want to check our mean, round the mean of zy to five decimal points, we get that mean of zero. And our standard deviation of zy comes to one. So it's working exactly like it needs to. The next thing that we're going to do is create a new standardized distribution. 
So this is done often when you want some easily interpretable number with a known standard deviation. So this is easy to remember and it's easy to interpret. The best example that I usually give is IQ scores. IQ scores always have a mean of 100 because they have undergone a transformation to ensure that means always 100. Their standard deviation is always 15 because they've undergone this transformation. So if you were to actually go convert from a z-score to a raw score, a to a new transform score, you would need to actually take that z-score that you're transforming times the value you have for your standard deviation and then add in the mean. Now, if you're just trying to go back to the original raw score, what you would have to do is actually use those already present mean and standard deviation from the original data set. But with the new standardized distribution, you actually pick up and make up whatever mean and standard deviation, within reason obviously, that you're trying to transform to. So in this case, let's create a new standard deviation from X that has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So like we were making IQ scores, okay? So in this case, we'll name our new distribution stand X for standardized X. Now there are two ways to do this. You could go back and do all of this again. However, you already calculated ZX. So what I would encourage you to do is take your ZX scores, because you already have all those Z scores, multiply them by the standard deviation. In this case, we want a standard deviation of 15. And then we want to add in the mean that we want, 100. Run this code. We can see now we now have stand X over here. We want the mean stand X to make sure it got where we wanted it to do. We can see here we have that mean of 100 like we want. And that standard deviation should come to 15. There we go. Now let's go ahead and do this for Y and create a new standard standardized distribution for Y. So again, we first thing we need to type up is the R object we want these values saved into. So this is whatever's easiest for you to make. You could just do SY if you wanted, as opposed to stand Y. And just for the sake of demonstration, let's go ahead and roll with that. Now we need to multiply our Z scores times the new standard deviation that we want. So our Z scores are in ZY. We need to multiply that by the standard deviation that we want. Now I didn't preset any values for this, so let's let's go with three. Three sounds like a nice number. And then let's go ahead and add in the mean we want. In this case, let's go with a multiple of three. Let's say nine. Okay, and these values are somewhat arbitrary. It's based on what would be easily interpretable to you and ultimately your target audience at this point. So run this code. We can see we now have SY here. If we look for the mean of SY, we can see we hit that mean of nine. If we want the standard deviation of SY, we can see we have that standard deviation of three. Now, one thing to note, when you do a Z-score transform or create a new standardized distribution, you are doing essentially kind of a monotonic transformation where everything is just moved on the number line a little bit. So for example, if you were to look at the distribution shapes of X, ZX, and StandX, they would all be the same. And one quick easy way to demonstrate this would be to create a plot of X and ZX. What you can see is they fall on a straight line. There's a perfect correspondence between X and ZX just like there's a perfect correspondence between X and stand X. And dare I say, from X, excuse me, ZX and stand X. Oh, I had an error in my last line. There we go. And I carried that error over. Pro tip, R is case sensitive, don't forget it. So this video covered how to actually perform a Z-score transformation. You just treat the R object you're trying to transform all the scores in as if it was the scores and use the functions therein. And then how to create a new standardized distribution. Good luck and happy.
coding? Yeah, happy coding. 